What comes to mind when I say Red and Link? Do you imagine a duo of dads in their early days of YouTube singing about Nilla wafer top hats and thousands of pillows? Do you think of them in their classic era with just a solid green background behind them and no Stevie to be heard? Do you picture the Good Mythical Morning GMM period where there was four times the number of videos? <sighs> Never mind, just thinking of that gives me goosebumps. Do you think of Cotton Candy Randy? Happy Cotton Candy Day, daddies! It's not Micah Pefty. Carolina Reapers, Chase the Cartographer, Ear Biscuits, or Willet episodes? Or are you one of the poor few who subbed for Deltarune content and clicked on this video, but have no idea who these Red and Link guys I'm talking about are? Well, thanks for coming, and I hope you'll stick around anyways. Regardless of your answer, the word buddy system probably didn't come to mind, which is quite honestly a shame. For those of you who might not know, Buddy System is a YouTube red show produced by Mythical Entertainment featuring Red and Link as the main leads. Each episode has a unique song related to the plot. There's songs about power naps, the fear of being naked, killing your clone, and my personal favorite, a song about exercise bikes and cheating in sports. The show never takes itself seriously, but you can tell how much passion and love Red and Link put into it. Buddy System is split into two seasons. In the first season, Red McLaughlin and Link Neal play themselves in a dramatized version of their lives. After Link's phone is stolen by their shared ex-girlfriend, it's a long story, the duo goes on an adventure to try to get it back and save their YouTube channel, meeting friends along the way. The second season is a large departure from the first. I'll let Red explain this one. Uh, this season is all about us in an alternate universe where we didn't meet in first grade. Some of the things that make me who I am and make Link who he is have been greatly accentuated, accentuated uh, expanded, almost to a point of caricature. Red and Link don't meet until Link loses his job at a packing peanut factory and his home, and Red allows him to be his secret roommate after an increase in the cost of rent. Red and Link play caricatures of themselves in the second season, much further removed from reality. Red, the character, is selfish and pleasure-seeking, and enjoys trying new things, which fits his job as a food taster. Deep down, he's insecure about himself and has commitment issues. Link, on the other hand, is rather dull and hates change. He's endearingly naive and looks out for those around him. Rhett and Link's friendship buds as Rhett helps Link to see that it's okay to get out of your comfort zone sometimes, and Link teaches Rhett to care more about other people's needs and wants. Even though they change each other over time, by the end, they have also come to an appreciation that it's okay if someone doesn't like or does things the same way you do. Something about Link's character in Season 2 always spoke to me during my five rewatches of the second season. The second season is ten times better than the first in everything but the music, don't come at me. <laughs> It wasn't until a couple of months ago that I realized why. Because Link, whether Mythical intended him to be or not, is autistic coded. Once I saw this, the evidence started piling up. And before we go on, just to be absolutely 100% clear, I am only talking about Link the character and not the living human being Link Neal. It's not my place to say anything about him or diagnose him with anything. I am not a mental health professional and I'm not giving anyone advice. I'm just talking about how I, an autistic person, recognize and perceive potentially autistic characters in the media. I'm going to make some generalizations about autism and its symptoms, and I in no way intend to offend other autistic people. Autism is a spectrum, and where each person lies on that spectrum is completely different. Anyways, with that stuff out of the way, let's go over some autistic traits that Link has in Buddy System Season 2. Routine. Link loves having a routine. His dream job is something, something totally, totally repetitive, repetitive and predictable. predictable. Supermarket cashier, toll taker, parking lot attendant and wishes that he could still work at the packing peanut factory after he is fired. He eats toast for breakfast every single day. When he learns that Rhett's job involves tasting a new culinary creation every day, he calls it a nightmare. Link shows interest in moving to the city with the least surprises per capita. Social deficit. Link often has difficulty picking up on social cues and expressing his emotions. He doesn't realize that his longtime coworker Vanessa has a crush on him until Rhett points it out, even though she couldn't be more obvious. When she replaces him with Roberto as her new chess partner, it takes him half the day to realize that this upsets him. He has no idea how to behave at a fancy restaurant and orders off the kids' menu. Link misinterprets Vanessa leaning in to kiss him as her wanting to be swayed in circular motion. Come on, tell me either of these people are neurotypical. Link takes things literally to an extreme. In the song Pour Some Coffee On Me, he takes the titular lyrics very literally and keeps trying to pour a giant cup of scalding coffee on Rhett, despite Rhett's protest that it's just a saying. Link gets scared in social settings. He said that one time a lady stopped me on the street and asked me for directions. I panicked so hard I squirted out a cloud of black ink. 
which is likely hyperbole but still shows that he has a fear of being talked to by strangers. Ren and Link are able to build an entirely new, nonverbal language together. Some studies have shown that 25-50% to 50 of children with Autism Spectrum Disorder ASD, do not develop functional, verbal communication, and if they have not further developed this skill by the age of 5, it is unlikely that they ever will. Red and Link's ease in developing and using this nonverbal language is rather atypical. No, not that one. In my own personal experience, I found that it's easier to communicate with other neurodiverse people, and it may be the same case for Rhett and Link, but I'm getting ahead of myself here. Link sometimes makes facial expressions that are inappropriate for social settings, which is a common attribute in autistic people. In a flashback, we learned that when his mom forced him to try asparagus, Link choked on it. When he coughed it up, it launched into his uncle's ear and destroyed his eardrum and his careers. This causes lasting emotional damage that makes Link determine never to eat something new again, but in the flashback, he's making a complete neutral face. Overall, Link shows many of the signs of social deficit that accompany autism, from missing the subtext in people's words, to having difficulty making and keeping friends, to taking things very literally, to getting anxious in social situations, and to finding difficulty expressing emotions and thoughts. Sensory issues. Since I just mentioned Link's shaky history with food, I think it's worth noting that some of his hatred towards vegetables, even before this unfortunate accident, could be attributed to sensory needs. As I mentioned before, he eats toast every day for breakfast. Many autistic people like eating processed foods because they are guaranteed to always have the same texture or flavor. Fresh produce has a tendency to be of varying ripeness, to be soft or chewy when it's not supposed to be, and have many different textures between skin, flesh, and seeds. Sweetness or acidity between fruits from the same batch or harvest may be completely different. Fresh produce is inconsistent, and many autistics like to know what to expect in the food they are eating. Though many autistics seem hypersensitive to taste, Link appears to be hyposensitive to taste, not even knowing what it is. How exactly would you describe what flavor is? Until he does lots of research and undergoes a training montage with Rhett. He even has a tongue tumor that was supposed to make him a super taster. Link also expresses displeasure at his food touching on his plate. After he shakes Amy's saliva-covered hand to enact the taste off, he immediately wipes his hand on his shirt even though Rhett and everyone else in the crowd seems to have no problem with it. It could also be argued that Link's hatred for being naked could be derived from sensory issues of air directly on your skin, but I think this is more out of self-consciousness and anxiety than anything. Unusual cognitive function. This traces back to social deficits, but Link can't tell when people are exploiting him or understand their true motivations. There is an obvious <coughs> method for him in the final episode of the season where he's taken off the streets by a sleazy man who acts like a <coughs> He is gullible in that he takes Rhett's accidental suggestion to tell Vanessa that she has country muscles and that he wants her leathery hands off his rhubarb. On two separate occasions, he is shown to easily let other people decide how he feels. One of the things that first got me going on the concept that Link may be autistic is something that Rhett says in episode 3 after Link gives him hot coffee. Sometimes I forget you have a man body but a child brain. Unfortunately, this is something that is often said about autistic people. We're told that we're immature. People frequently infantilize us as uwu babies. Whether we are able to live on our own or not, whether we are able to take care of ourselves or not, and whether we communicate verbally or not, adults with autism should be treated as what we are. Boom. A child. No. Adults. We deserve as much respect as anyone else, even if some of our actions or interests could be perceived as childlike. I'm not saying this to cancel Rhett or Link for this line. I think that Link is still a mostly good representation of autism, as I'll explain later. But I bring up this point to show that it's very fundamental level, even in this alternate universe where everyone seems to be awed by our universe's standards. Link is different from everyone else in the way he acts and perceives things. Special interest. One last cherry on top for my autism theory is Link's potential special interest. In the episode Spa Trip, Rep becomes hurt after Link says that he's planning to move to Dayton, Ohio. He asks why Link has a sudden interest in this random city. Listen to what Link has to say about the city. Why the sudden obsession with Dayton, Ohio? Oh, it's not sudden. For years I've obsessed about Dayton from afar. Walking paths, yarn store. Did you know that Dayton has the fewest surprises per capita of any American city? I'm not surprised. I just never thought I'd have the guts to move there. But today, you've shown me that trying new stuff is a good thing. Later in the episode, we're shown that when Link is left to his own devices, he'll spend five days to hand make t-shirts and buy banners of Dayton or Ohio in general. I've said it before and I'll say it again. No neurotypical person would do this. Overall, I really like this theory slash headcanon that Buddy System Link is autistic. 
I feel like he subverts a lot of the stereotypes we see with autistic people in the media. Sure, he is a white cishet male, but Link is the stereotypical low empathy, super smart savant that only exists to be useful or cute, like we see with Sean Murphy, Entrapta, Abed, and Sheldon. His sensory needs are different from what we usually see, with instead of having issues with loud noises, he has difficulty with taste and touch. I'm not saying that autistic people with these traits I contrasted him with are bad. I just haven't personally felt represented by these characters, except for those with hearing sensitivities. Always seeing the message that we're only important if we can do something really weighs you down after a while. Link doesn't exist to help other people. He's a dynamic character who learns and grows, just like any other non-autistic character in the media. Autism isn't his personality trait, though it definitely affects his way of seeing the world. Even though Rhett thinks that Link is eccentric, he appreciates Link's simple pleasures and his positive attitude. Link's autism doesn't make him bad or annoying, it just makes him different and that's something to be celebrated, which is the main theme of the entire second season. And Link's autism is most certainly not something that needs to be cured. Overall, I'm really proud that Rhett and Link were able to make such a great autistic coded character, whether they've realized it or not. Link's characterization helped me feel seen and shows that we're all deserving of love, friendship, and adventure, and that if we haven't found them yet, then they'll come someday and it'll be even greater than you can imagine. I know that's super cheesy, but it's something I genuinely believe. Now this might be where you think that the video ends, but mwahaha! I'm not even three quarters of the way done. I haven't even talked about how Buddy System Season 2 Rhett is also neurodivergent. Honestly, I'm starting to get a little burnt out, so we're going to do this next part Ken Burns style. Rhett has very specific routine time to the minute, needs to be stimulated constantly, and uses pleasurable sensory objects to self-soothe disassociates for extended periods of time, doesn't process his negative emotions in a healthy way, and has difficulty regulating his emotions in general, often having meltdowns or blowing up at other people, operates best in chaos, can be socially inept and doesn't realize when other people are asking leading questions, gets extreme hyperfixations that he quickly jumps from, doesn't seem to always enjoy physical contact, and finally, has a special interest in Kenneth Kenneth, and knows odd and obscure facts about pleasure, something which he obsesses over to an unhealthy degree. I'll let you draw your conclusions, but I think the evidence speaks for itself. Some people might think that it's weird that both Rhett and Link would be neurodivergent, and that maybe their personalities and behaviors are normal for the universe they're in, but we clearly see in the background of the show that people who aren't in the main cast are named are relatively normal people. Also, Rhett is 100% a closeted trans woman who isn't ready to admit it, and no, I will not take constructive criticism. Thank you for watching this video. I genuinely hope that you enjoyed it. This has been something that's been fermenting in my mind like yeast, wanting to be baked into sourdough. And now I have managed to serve you a nice, warm, buttery slice of truth bread. I was a little scared making this because I know it's different from what I've made in the past, but I'm hoping that the mythical beast and open Deltarune Undertale nerds will come through. If you did enjoy this video, smash that like button and bust that subscribe button if you want me to grace your feed with my presence once every few months. Let me know your thoughts about my headcams in the comments, and I'll see you next time. So, um, bye!